We want to look next at capturing a repeating group with a table embedded. So I'll add an image to Flexi Layout Studio. It'll be pre-processed and we can take a look at it. So we have what looks like a normal table structure, description quantity, rate, and amount, but then embedded we have an order number. So we've got under order number a table with two rows, a table with three rows, a table with one row, and finally a table with one row. So let's capture this data. Once again, it's a one-page document. I'm going to disable my footer. And in my header, once again, I'll do something pretty simple. I'll do keyword form ID 1 and add some static text. and we'll permit multiple lines and we'll make this required. Let's go ahead and test this and we found our header just fine. Next let's create a block of the repeating group type. We'll just call it car parts table repeating group can name it however we want really and we can't map it yet but within the, within this repeating group we can add a table block and that table block should have our column names so I'll add those description you will remember that we can't have any special characters and any spaces. And there we have it. Next, let's create a repeating group in our element tree. And I'll call it repeating group car parts with table and preemptively I will select the repeating group name set this to last found and say that we always want to search in a downward motion below the bottom of our last found instance of the relation the next thing we can do in this repeating group is create a labeled field and we'll get the order number with this labeled field. The label will be order number and the field position, the default right, um, should work. And we have learned that the nearest to function is going to make sure that our software doesn't select what it thinks is the highest quality string, but rather the string that's nearest to the header. Let's test this out. All right, we've got our first instance, our second instance, our third instance, our fourth instance, all traveling in a downward path, our search area keeps on diminishing and this last repeating group entry is empty which is fine and we've got a good start. Next we'll create a table element within our repeating group and we'll call it table that's fine and notice the error condition that's because we have not selected the block so in the columns tab table block select. I'll go ahead and select that. Here are our column names and I don't know if this will work. Let's just go ahead and try it without any settings. Option, optional setting changes. So 
I'm seeing some problems here. We're actually capturing order number. Let's open up this repeating group. We got that on our table. Found the header, found the body, but the body's included, including order number. So let's fix that. Let's say that the table should be beneath the order number field. So we'll say below the bottom of the order number field and see if that helps. Let me back up. Okay, so we got our first instance. Looks good. Our second instance looks good. Our third instance looks good. Our fourth instance looks good. Let's just check on this again. There's the table. Um, now it recognized this as some sort of um, table itself, an incomplete table. So let's address that. I can set a relation in the repeating group that dictates where a repeating group ends. So I will start with a search element, add element of the static text type. And I'll call this keyword repeating group end. And under static text, I can search for potential layout change. I'm going to drag this above my repeating group. And I should test it before I go any further. We found that string reliably. So at least uh, testing this, doing a quick test, we found it. Now my repeating group can have an additional relation. I can say above keyword repeating group end, above the top. And that's going to constrain our repeating group, um, and everything in the repeating group will inherit that relation. So let's match one more time. And we got our first table plus order number, second table plus order number, third table and order number, fourth table plus order number, and we can see our search area. It stops right above this string, potential layout change. Let's make sure this last repeating group entry is empty and it's not. So we've got a problem there. Um, but actually we don't. When we drill down, we see that's indeed empty. So we could say under the table, do not find this element if order number is not found. And this looks like it's perfect. Let's finish up mapping our blocks and export our AFL file. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a block for the order number. So I will map this to the source element order number. We don't want to select that because that'll get us the label, the gap, and the field. We just want the field value. And I'll click Apply and OK. The other thing that we should do is actually point this repeating group block to the repeating group now that it exists. And let's put the order number above the table and finally let's map the table and that's done let's take one more look at it okay let's export our afl file 
Before I do that, I'm going to make one last setting change. I want to say in order of finding, even though top to bottom is what I'm going to do anyway. So we'll export the AFL file. To the proper folder, the Flexi Layout folder. And we'll create a backup. Again, I would usually make that more descriptive. Then let's go to our document def our project rather, and we'll create a new document definition. We'll load the Flexi Layout. car parts table, and an image file. Car parts table. And it's really an advantage that we can test right away in the document definition editor. So I'll click testing, run test. And we have our order number, table, order number, table, order number, table, order number table. That is a good result.